I remember a while back feeling very insecure about my role as a leader. Yeah, you know, I found it easy to compare myself to others who had better backgrounds than I did, or they had more opportunities, had more education, had more experience, you name it. And I got so focused on those things that I began to completely neglect the gifts that God had given me. Now, can you relate in any way? I mean, can you get so focused on what you don't have that you lose sight of what you do have? Don't we have time to treat things as if it's all resting upon ourselves rather than the God who empowers us? Our young pastor friend, Timothy, got caught up in the same thing. He was young, he was facing opposition, and yet Paul's instruction to Timothy isn't only relevant, wasn't only relevant for that young pastor, but it's relevant for all of us. So I'm going to read from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit that God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. So Timothy is struggling a bit. He's feeling very insecure, which has him gun shy. Right? So he's basically pulling back rather than moving forward. And Paul's just not going to have it. So uh, Paul is persuaded Tim of Timothy's faith and his calling. And so he tells him to fan into flame the gift of God. So if you think of your gifting and calling as a flame, right, there are seasons when the flame is burning bright and strong. And in other seasons where it may feel like it's flickering and fragile. And the temptation when it feels flickering and fragile is to withdraw and become very passive. And Paul is t telling Timothy, no, press in. Right? To fan something into flame is to do something actively. When we feel insecure, uh, passivity is what comes natural rather than being active. And Paul is encouraging young, young Timothy, as well as us, to act in spite of our feelings. Right? So what does it look like for you to stir up your gifting and calling? Then he goes on to tell Timothy that God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Right? So fear of opposition or, or fear of where he may not have felt like he measured up had, had stopped Timothy dead in his tracks. And Timothy needed to be reminded uh, that what was going on internally, it, it wasn't of God. God gives power. He gives love. He gives a sound mind. And so where is fear getting the upper hand by deterring you from what you know to be your God-given calling? That's not of God. And Paul is encouraging us to fight through that fear. And finally, he tells Timothy not to be ashamed, but to join him in suffering for the gospel. So Timothy was likely catching flack for being a Christian and, and he was in, and for visibly following Christ. And if he continued that, down that path, like he was going to hear about it and his tendency was to be ashamed. And the tendency, his tendency was to care what others thought and therefore to pull back. Instead, Paul invites Timothy to join him in suffering if that suffering is the natural byproduct of fanning into flame the gift that God had given him. Right? In other words, it's better to suffer for following Christ than to suffer for not following Christ. And so I want to leave you with this question. Where is God calling you to fan into flame the gift and calling that he is giving you? I want to encourage you to do so. And as you do, I am confident that your joy and faith will soar.